Hey y'all, today we're working on this Marshall JCM800 model 2203. It's a 100 watt head from 1988. Client says it made sound, now it doesn't make sound. Let's open it up and see what's going on. Let's go ahead and check the fuse first. And don't even need to put a multimeter on that. It's physically, you can tell it's blown. That is the correct fuse type. It's a one amp fuse, easy enough to replace. We'll go ahead and check the mains fuse. Yeah, so that's fine. Sometimes they might look all right, but they can still be blown. So you gotta check them. So as you can see, this DI jack has fallen out, or fallen in, and somebody's replaced the nut on these. But upon closer investigation, there was a, like a, some kind of a metal insert in here, similar to this one. These are the original jacks. I don't know who has shoved this insert in there, but one of them had popped and was not allowing the cable, the speaker cable to go all the way in. And that could have contributed to why the fuse blew. The caps in this thing are also original. So, being is that they're you know, 32 years old or something like that. We're going to replace those. Yeah, these are the original jacks. I don't know why somebody must have lost the nuts to them. I just replaced them with some bullshit. I took this apart on site just to see if it was something simple and one of these cage nuts was down and it was rattling around in here too. Typically they'd sit on the bottom and probably wouldn't even touch anything, but uh, it could still get lodged underneath the circuit board or something. Let's see what else we can find with this thing open. All the caps, like I said, they're original. We're gonna change those out. Uh, all these cement resistors look fine. I don't see anything else that jumps out except for these two uh, these two potentiometers have been changed out, which is kind of silly considering, um, I mean, I guess somebody that did the work, this is, this is okay. How hard is it just to find the correct part to put in there? I've got them. Use the right parts. I mean, I understand maybe somebody did this at home, but this actually looks good enough that it was probably a regular repair guy. We've got to take these off anyway. If it's simple enough, I might just, I might just go ahead and do it because it, bothers the shit out of me to see it but by all means that is one way to do it so you notice I've gone straight for pulling the circuit board I haven't even checked anything yet uh, my reason behind this is because with caps that are this old I mean these are original to the amp from 1988 the electrolytic or the dielectric compound within the electrolytic goes bad it just dries out over time if I replace the fuse and get it running the, the caps don't last forever and plus, I'm not going to waste time trying to troubleshoot something that I know should be fixed anyway. You don't even have to pull the board to replace these filter caps. On like another 2203 before 1984, you would have to lift the board. and You'd have to desolder a few components. This one, I just have to flip it so I can get to these two bias capacitors here. These uh, 10 UF ones. These will come out pretty easy. So as soon as I pull this, you can see right here on the bottom... This is B1M. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Nope. This is supposed to be an A1M, which is just the B and the A. Uh, it's just the taper of the pot. You know, probably doesn't make a huge difference, but man, I can't let it go. I can't let it leave my shop with something incorrect like that. Which the mid pot seems to be correct. I'm reading about 23K across that pot, which that's what it should be 22 or 25. <laughs> I think whoever just did that before, just, they just didn't have the right parts. I mean, the solution worked, and I'm sure it works fine. And in a pinch, that's absolutely okay. But I can't let it walk out of here like that because I know I have the parts sitting in a drawer. That's it. Piece of cake. All right, let's pull these. Let's pull these caps out for the bias circuit. Now some people might say, hey, it's really easy for you because you got a desoldering gun. Yes, it is easy for me because I have a desoldering gun. I would suggest you get one too. Why work harder when you don't have to? Now I've seen a lot of people when they when they do these pieces, they just clip them on the top side and, 
and solder them in there. When you're trying to rush through repairs like this, that's when you make mistakes. Anyway, I don't. I just don't think it's fair to send something back to a, a customer or a client when you could have taken a few extra minutes, done it correctly, and they won't have any problems. Sweet. Let's get these caps out of here. LCRs. Holy shit. This thing feels super light, which means that it's probably very, very dry. This one feels significantly heavier, heavier than this one. Shit, by a lot. That's crazy. So, cool. And just stick the new ones right in there. We got three F and T's. She ate the squirrel. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. She ate it head first. Ew. <laughs> yeah, when I went to go check on her, she was eating the torso. Ew. She ate head first. And I heard all the bones she was breaking there. She didn't give you a bite? No. She didn't give you a bite. We just did a full recap on that thing and even including the the time to set up the camera we're still at under 45 minutes oh not only that but i also changed these two knobs here i told the customer i could get this done in an hour and i didn't even expect to actually yeah that's even me searching for these fucking pots here so let's do something about this So I was actually looking for a like an automotive, like an insert plug, like a cap, to just plug this thing off. I think the placement of this uh, DI for this amp was probably a good idea on paper when they first did it. The actual application here, it's kind of fallen short. It, it doesn't really sound great. Nobody uses it for recording. And that, being that close to the speaker jack, if you plug into it by mistake, uh, you will not enjoy the result. What I think I'll do is I'll just roll with three standard black clip jacks, and I'll put in red nuts on the ones that you need to plug into. Oh, damn it. That's a circuit. Oh, look at that. Is there anything we left out? It doesn't look like it. Got all three caps changed. I got all of these jacks changed out. I was actually even able to use one of the original parts here, or both of the original resistors that go on there. All right, we're almost done here. Got everything back together. Got all my filter caps in. I got all the knobs back on. Um, I had to dig and search and find a couple of extra nuts that fit these pots because, well, they don't come with them for some strange reason. We are almost done, though. The panel's coming off a little bit. I'm going to glue that back down. So this cage nut had fallen out. And I've got a ton of these. So kind of as a gesture of good faith, I'm going to... Just go ahead and replace all of these as well. So I built this bench, this little jerry-rigged block, so I could uh, basically fit a fit a bias probe up, up under the amp and keep it upside down. Usually, if if this is one of mine or something that I'm going to take on tour. I'll actually put in the one ohm resistors on all of the output tubes uh, in order to measure the bias current. But actually, I'm sorry that you measure the negative bias voltage. So since this is not uh, one of mine, I'm going to go ahead and put bias probes here and we will determine the bias that way. Really wish I had some more room to show you the exact layout of what I have here. But the amplifier is off, 
I've got it hooked up to my Variac here with the switch, so there's no power going to it. Um, I don't like reaching over top of it if it's if it's live. But here's what I've got. I've had I have two multimeters set right here, just because I don't have like a, a probe kit or whatever. But each probe is going to its own meter, and I've got a desktop meter hooked up as well. That's I've got this clipped uh, to measure the plate voltage. And it's insulated and it's not touching anything else. So basically I can I can take all of my readings at once without having to uh, reach my hand in or poke around with probes. Everything's everything's set. So with that being said, we can uh, electrify the amplifier or at least send power to it. I can turn it on. Got a red light going here. Let's turn the master all the way down so if we bump anything it's not just gonna you know all of our tubes appear to be lighting up fine all right let's go ahead and flip our standby here Son of a fucking bitch interesting so I, I, I pulled the tube put it back in just to check to make sure the orientation was right, no broken pins or something. Uh, and then I, just to be certain on the actual meters, I flip flop my meters. Now I do have uh, a good reading on the tube that I was getting zero on, which is telling me that there's a problem with the socket. It's just, we're gonna hit it with deoxid and I'll probably take a little screwdriver in there and, and retention them it's really important to clean the sockets and tension them because obviously there's there was a fault right there so I should be hitting a bias voltage of around about 37 so one of my tubes is a little bit little bit hotter it's like at 41 I've got one at about 37 I don't think that's too big of a deal we can go ahead and play through this thing and just feel it out you know see what's see what's really happening here Hell yeah, man. Bias is creeping up a little bit. I believe we have a winner so uh, it sounds great bias has crept up quite a bit it's probably about close to 10 milliamps over but that's not a big deal I'll see where it I'm gonna let it cool down for a second while keeping it on and energized we'll see where that thing falls and uh, you know it might be okay it's still sticking around it's it's pretty much staying where it's at we're at 49 on one side 46 47 on the other so Let's go ahead and bring this back down, now that it's good and warmed up. So I'm aiming for like 37. Uh, I've got one at about 36, the other one is about 39, 40. So one side will be 3 milliamps hotter, really not that, that, that big of a deal. You're not going to hear that, that difference. Cool, so we fixed all that, got new cage nuts, it's biased up, all the uh, filter capacitors and the electrolytics and the bias supply have been changed out. Fix those knobs, it's running great, it sounds good. Now I can give this back to dude and I know that he, he's going to be able to take this and gig with it and you're not going to have any more problems at all with this thing. It's rock solid now. It was cool that I got to glue this back on, that bothered me a little bit that that was coming loose. Let's see, you can also see the speaker jack fix. I uh, threw some red nuts on there, so it's kind of, you can't really mistake, you know, this for the DI. Just plug in your speaker and use the red ones. You know, the new F&T filter caps look great. And I've got all new cheese head screws to go in there. The old ones sometimes are no good, especially when you cross-thread them or they get bent or crushed. 
I sprayed deox into the tube sockets as well and cleaned those. Um, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. A little piece of the shield in here that's coming off. Can't help myself. Here's a little piece of Tolex coming up. This is already this has already been split, so that's why nothing was gonna was gonna stick in there. We can fix that too. All right, so I don't think any of us really have time to wait on this thing. As far as like me put some, I could put some wood glue in there and then clamp it and then let it sit for a while, but I don't think this repair necessarily warrants all that. So I am just going to... Oh, is it split on the other side too? Oh, mother fuck. Alright, that's all I did there. I just put some longer wood screws in there with uh, some finish washers. Just uh, I just wanted to make sure that this had some extra grip. And I did glue the uh, the boards back together in there and then screw those shut as well so over time that'll that'll set up and that'll be a lot stronger hopefully and all this is this little strip here is also just glued to this guy so I mean you could you could just as easily break it back off and put a new piece of uh, MDF or you know a little strip of plywood this is like Baltic birch or something and you can you can put some clamps on there and it'll it'll do the job cool well uh i'm gonna jam through this thing for a minute i'm well, sorry about the shitty lighting but look i'm in a shop all right the amp's on it's put back together it's sounding amazing uh i love i fucking love these old 800s man this one is killer and um, I've got a Marshall cabinet here with G1265 speakers and it's being mic'd up with an Audix i5. And uh, if you're not familiar with that microphone, it is pretty much just an all, it'll do anything an SM57 will do for the most part. I just wanted to try something a little bit different. Um, a 57's been my go-to forever and I uh, just wanted to experiment with some new flavors. But let's hear the amp roar. I got the presence on zero, bass on six, mids always on ten. Uh, treble at five. I got the master. Shit. The master's barely at two. And preamps on two. <laughs> Thank you. 
sound of these amps. I mean, this is just a Les Paul straight in, no effects. Uh, this thing gets pretty down and dirty. I, I've got, this is my uh, Marshall from 1982. For all intents and purposes, it's the same amp. There's a few differences in the filter capacitors. They changed the circuitry in 1984 uh, once they went to the horizontal inputs here. But other than that, it's, uh, it's the same amp, but I feel like this one's even got, it's got a little bit more of a raw feeling to it, which uh, I kind of like. I think this one's got more bottom into it, but it's also got a 6552s that might make a little bit of a difference. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I hope you were able to find this video informative and stimulating. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe and uh, hang out with me next time when I fix some fucked up shit.